Welcome back to AfricaCom TV, uh, part of the 20th anniversary of AfricaCom right here in Cape Town, South Africa. And now we're joined by the South African Deputy Minister of Telecommunications. You must be having a wonderful time. Well, it's not just wonderful, it's exciting actually to be here. It is indeed. Um, what have been some of the highlights for you so far? Where do I start? Everything has been great. Uh, going to stall by stall the exhibition center, seeing the work that is being showcased by the different players, but most importantly the engagements that we had with the different partners that are here. That has been a marvelous opportunity for us as the department. Quite a big focus this year has been on satellites and how satellites will enable better access, some would argue more efficient access to connectivity for all of Africa. How are we doing in South Africa when it comes to legislation around such areas? Well, in South Africa, we've just taken a bold step, actually, even if we are not yet there in terms of the legislation. The cabinet has just taken a decision that it's high time that we develop a domestic satellite for our country. Therefore, we are working with our implementing agency, which is called Centec, to make sure that they work on the business plan and we will take that and present it to cabinet before the end of the financial year. But as you know that we are working with lots of stakeholders because it's not just our department. We have science and technology, as you know that we won the SKA tender. Therefore we said, what are the opportunities that are in the space? What are the opportunities that are there for satellite? Already, as I mentioned, Centec, our, our, our distributor, our satellite distributor, has been doing lots of work in terms of assisting broadcasters and other players that are in need of the services. So yeah, we are getting there. And come 2018, after the next financial year, we'll be saying, South Africa, you have a story to tell. And what will be that story? Because uh, as much as I've been interviewing a lot of tech giants and CEOs and heads of uh, uh, departments and all that kind of thing, they work with technology. But I'm just an ordinary South African consuming technology. What will it mean for me, do you think? That story will be that, for the first time, South Africa has produced its own satellite. Not only get to use what is available, but a local made one, which means there's, there's an economic spin-off for the consumers or the citizens of South Africa, but most importantly, an opportunity for our people to get connected. Like I mentioned earlier, we have a responsibility to make sure that all South Africans are, inter are, are, are connected to internet. And hello, does it mean that if you have connected South Africa, Africa is okay? It can be. The story of South Africa is not complete without Africa being connected. Therefore, the deployment of satellite will allow us to ensure that we extend our services to the neighboring countries. And what's the better way to do if it's not with satellite? Indeed. Now, you've actually set some targets for yourself and your department and the government of South Africa. 22 million South Africans by 2020. Is this feasible still? Very feasible which is why we are also here, like I said. We have the program that we refer to a policy that we call SA Connect, which is our broadband rollout plan. But we're saying let's also explore other avenues that can help complement what is it that we want to achieve as government. We have not been happy with the pace of the rollout because, as you said, we, all, we already have 22 million people that are not connected. We've got to fast track. We cannot afford to have our people being left behind. We are building a digital economy. We've got to ensure that we have an information society. And the only way to do that is to make sure that a mother, a son, a daughter, a boyfriend, girlfriend, everybody is connected. And like I said, satellite is one of those measures that will ensure that we do it with speed, we fast track it, but most importantly, efficiently in everything that we'll be doing. Deputy Minister, are you happy then that you've identified what some of those hurdles or challenges were that uh, resulted in the slow pace, as you referenced, of rolling out this technology? And have we overcome that? We're very happy because we are a learning country. Of course, at times we get to be exposed to particular programs and products, and therefore we tend to think these are the best. But with experience and time, then you're able to identify this is good, this is not good, this is good but will not take me to the desired results within the particular defined time. And then this is when we begin to say, what else can be done to complement what we have started? Therefore, yes, we are happy that we initiated the process, but we're more happier with the fact that now we know more, we are advanced, and we believe that working with our partners and everybody that is involved in the sector, we can do more for South Africa and thereof Africa will be connected. Another big buzzword at Africa Com 2017 has been the fourth industrial revolution. Your take on it and what uh, opportunities can South Africa exploit from that? My take on the fourth industrial revolution is that, hello, wherever you are, 
if you're listening or watching us, you must know the machines are here to replace you. You've got to get yourself empowered. You've got to make sure that you play your own part so that you're not left behind. What this therefore means, because if we're talking about machine to machine con connectivity or communication, it means people must be connected. It goes back to the pace that I spoke about on our rollout of broadband. But most importantly, the skills that we must therefore empower the people that will be connected. How do they make sure that as that robot comes to say, I'm going to be your PA minister, how do I make sure that the existing human PA, although the robot will be efficient, the existing PA must not lose the job. Therefore, one has to find a niche in terms of saying, what is it that I can do to make sure that I'm better than the robot or I put in the robot. One of the key drivers that we always talk about is the content. Most people, they just see technology as technology. They do not think that there are systems, there's applications, and there's the content that must be driven by the technology. And therefore, we are saying this is an opportunity for the people of our country, for the people of Africa and the world to say, we can also make our own mark. If there is that mic that has been developed there that we are speaking on and you, are, you have it on your hand, then what is it that I can add in the mic so that I can also derive an economic spin-off. I can say, yes, I made my mark in the value chain. But it's not about me just getting everything or just getting to consume. But it's about me contributing effectively and meaningfully in what we refer to as the radical economic transformation. Because key to some of the socio-economic challenges that we are identifying in South Africa and indeed on the African continent, the solutions lie in the space we're talking about. We're talking about financial and business, we're talking about healthcare, education, we're talking about government services, technology and some of the conversations that are being grappled with at Africa.com, they have the solutions to some of our challenges. They have the solutions but remember what I said earlier, it lies with an individual, the person first. The person has to know how to use whatever technology that is there. The person has to be informed that there is an existing technology that can help himself or herself to be better tomorrow. But most importantly, the person has to have access, which refers to the issue of affordability. Because they can all be there, but if our people cannot afford it, then hello, you're not solving their problems. This is an opportunity for our people and government to make sure that we work with stakeholders and partners to say, how do we develop policies that will enable you as the private sector to, 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 to make more profit? But most importantly, how do I make it a point that my people on the ground get to get the best services efficiently and as and when they want them? And maybe as a parting question then, let's just hone in on that uh, important partnership between private sector and the public sector in delivering some of this. As the ANC government in South Africa, and that's one thing that we believe in that if we are to move South Africa forward we've got to make sure that we reach out to all we've got to bring all the stakeholders like as the department we have done we have launched a program that we refer to as internet for all and it has brought a massive number of stakeholders who are industry players who say we are here we can assist that's what we, we, we brag about as the ANC government to say we cannot do it alone as government. We're a government for the people and about the people and therefore if we mean that whoever that is coming to make profit in that has to work with us because the person that you refer to as a consumer or as a client is the person that I refer to as a, a citizen and my voter. Therefore we're servicing the same person. Therefore it's important that we make sure that we synergize our strategies. As I come up with policies, you make sure that you respond to the policies that will make my person better on the ground. You heard it here, the minister promising that 22 million South Africans will be connected by 2020. Thank you very much, Deputy Minister, for joining us here. Thank you so much for having me.